Succession planning is at the top of the list when it comes to priorities for many HR professionals. They are keen to build the next generation of leaders and know it's critical to an employer's success. And yet, succession planning remains a challenging area when it comes to building and formalizing a program, identifying future leaders, and ensuring their success. Our recent roundtable, moderated by associate publisher and managing editor Todd Humber, brought together senior HR experts to discuss the issues and provide possible solutions. In this video, the third of a three-part series, panelists talk about whether it's better to recruit leaders internally or externally, and how to ensure leaders don't fail in their new role. It's, it's more costly to buy talent in, um, but sometimes you have no choice. Um, the, the, the research says that if you buy talent in, it's less loyal and doesn't stay as long as if you develop people internally. I think it's a yes and. You do need to have a plan for both. You do need to have both those streams active and, de and delivering people into, you, into your organization. The balance is going to change from time to time depending on your needs. But you, we're always going to have a crisis where somebody's gone from a job where there is no successor and you are going to have to go outside. It's a balance. You know, it, if you have a senior team where you know four or five out of six or seven people in the senior team are have grown up in that company and never worked anywhere else, and you're going to have a very a, a much more narrow view of, of the mm -hmm. business. So I think you have to strategically bring in uh, top people from outside, but make sure you really nurture that, that uh, talent that grows from within. And it does really depend on strategy, not just the overall organizational strategy, but even the, the sub-businesses within the, within the organization. Because if you are growing in a different area or you have a business plan that, that's going to require new capabilities, then you may very well need to go outside and have a much stronger percentage of external hires than, than development. Um, we have a strong build internal um, strategy because we there's a strong focus on building and growing talent at TD and it's very important to to invest in people. But that doesn't mean that you you're not going to want to go outside at certain points. You do need capabilities, and you, if they're not available in your organisation, you, then you do have to go outside. So it does depend on the the sub strategies within each business within the organisation as well. I also think it depends on the size of the organisation. The larger organizations, there's no excuse, no excuse to be going outside. If it's a successful company, you've got people who are already delivering the goods for you. So, But uh, much smaller companies, uh, you know, 1,500, you're not always going to have exactly the right person in, in place, ideally if you can do that. It's very tricky. I, you know, I've seen it so many times, you know, you take that superstar engineer and you make him the manager of engineering and six months later you're uh, you're in a world of hurt so uh, you know I think it's a you know you've got to ha make sure first of all not just to do that just because they were the top technical person in that area that they're gonna miraculously morph into a great manager so up front you have to have done your homework to make sure that there's the foundation of good management skills there and then I think once they're in the job, it's, it's exactly what Les said, nurture and protect. Surround other great leaders, mm -hmm. surround them with other great leaders. Um, even go assign a coach, assign, if you can't afford an external coach, assign one of the top executives to, you know, just be their buddy, the old-fashioned buddy program. It still has a lot of good valid points. I think it's also important to ask the person whether they aspire to a management or leadership role. Often they don't but it's the only way they can get a promotion. And, and so they try it. And um, so I think to have that conversation with them up front, and if that's not where they want to go, how else can they develop and become part of the succession plan within the, the organization? And then I would certainly back it up with some kind of assessment, and I'm a big believer in mentoring and coaching as well. If somebody does fail in that role and the organization reacts in a very bad way, then nobody else is going to want to Everybody's move into that watching. leadership role. So how you actually respond to that, that failure and knowing that you may have taken a big risk on somebody because that's how you grow talent, um, then, then I think you've got to respond the right way and support them and, and move them into another role if that's the right thing or help continue to help them coach and grow so it sends the right message to everyone. 
And the reality is people are going to fail, right? There's going to be problems and you kind of have to accept it and you sort of say, well, you know, well, they didn't quite achieve this, but they did get this part. Let's tell them about that. Make sure they know about this, but let's maybe work on a different strategy, a different direction. And then, you know, all you can do is try to mitigate that, you know, in the overall plan.